thank you for uh, joining us today and thank you Elena for the kind introductions. So uh, the hospitality sector here in Cyprus, I would say that it has been growing uh, for the last uh, 20 years. The gross value added of the sector has increased uh, from uh, 700 million to around 1.3 uh, billion. So we're talking about uh, doubling, almost doubling uh, within the last 20 years. But the prospects we believe that uh, are here to stay and the outlook it's uh, positive as we have also seen from the previous presentation. Once the pandemic uh, is put under control, we are expecting here in Cyprus an ongoing economic rebound amid lower interest rates, which are expected to also support the sector. We're talking about uh, the share of the sector of around 6% direct impact and another 5% of indirect, making it around 11% uh, total contribution. And that is really huge. And uh, despite the pandemic and the heat that we have seen, we continuously believe that uh, we will see the hospitality sector thriving in the years to come. I would like to welcome uh, the panelists here today. And uh, I would like to start with George. Uh, George, please uh, have your intervention. George is the CEO of uh, Invest Cyprus. And I uh, would like to hear your uh, remarks. Thank you, Andreas. The... Uh... Um, I feel the mandate uh, to promote and create yes, the um, as you um, heard uh, from our chairman and from the ministers, uh, we have the uh, mandate and the top we've said it as top priority to attract uh, the FDI that the government is needed in order to support uh, the targets that uh, had been sent under the national tourism strategy and um, for this we um, uh, intensified our promotional activities we are in direct contact with the supply side to uh, be in line with with what is there available in the market and also give the signal to the market uh, of what is the needs internationally, the trends. Uh, and um, we are here uh, to work with the international investors as the first point of contact, providing information and anything that is needed. Thank you, Andre. Indeed, an, uh, an impressive work uh, by SIPA on promoting not only this sector, but also other sectors here in the island. And uh, I think, George, it will be fair to say that despite uh, uh, tourists, we're also looking to expand the specific sector uh, for professional uh, purposes as well. But now I'd like to pass to Andrea Sandis, Managing Director or Office Head for West Balkans, Greece and Cyprus, and Director of Cyprus Affiliates of NCH uh, Capital. Andreas, please, for your remarks. Andreas, firstly, I would like to thank SIBA for the invitation and also to congratulate them for the excellent job that they are doing and their efforts to promote Cyprus as an attractive destination for foreign direct investment. NCH Capital is a privately owned, regulated by the capital markets of the US. Uh, it is based, the headquarters in, uh, as I said, in uh, the States. It is involved in um, real estate, hospitality sector, agribusiness, and private equity. We do understand and realize that the hospitality sector, as well as the real estate, is not a short-term uh, commodity asset. So our time horizon, if we need to exit, is between 10 to 15 years. We have been looking into emerging markets as well. And um, I will say that even though Cyprus is a member of the European Union since 2004, we do believe that it has a lot of opportunities. We see it as a market where things can happen. And that's why we have decided to invest. Uh, our main focus with regards to the hospitality sector is based in, uh, is, is, is in Greece, it's in Cyprus, in Montenegro, and uh, generally in the Balkans. 
So I'm glad to participate in this um, panel and I'm looking forward to constructive comments from our people here. Thank you very much, Andreas. I would like to pass on to our next uh, uh, panelist, which is Eli Milky, Vice President Development of Radisson Hotel Group for the Middle East, Pakistan, Greece and Cyprus. Eli. Hi, thank you for having me. I, I was in Cyprus last week. And, uh, I wish I could have been able to attend this one in person, but I had to be in Greece. So I'm calling you from Athens. And uh, so, yes, thank you for having me. I thank uh, Invest Cyprus for all the efforts they're doing as well. Uh, we believe in the market. Uh, we have uh, currently four hotels in operation and under development. Uh, and we have two more to be signed next month. Uh, this would create, this would bring around 650 keys to the island of Cyprus creating 400 jobs. So we believe in Cyprus there's a huge opportunity, huge branded opportunity to, to, to add to the existing hotel market there. Thank you very much, uh, Eli. We look forward to hearing more uh, from you in a while. But uh, we also have with us uh, Kevin uh, Sweet, Vice President and Property Chief Financial Officer of Melco Resorts. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, uh, like everybody else said, I, I really do appreciate this. I, I think these types of conferences just show uh, the commitment of you know the government and uh, the industry as a whole to see Cyprus succeed and to see it continue to grow uh, and attract tourists and, and expand both peak and non-peak uh, seasons. You know, and, and you know, in the resort that we're building, you know, it's over 600 million in, in direct investment, 500 rooms. You know, that, that that's all key to driving that continued tourism support. So. I look forward to talking through this and, and answering more questions, but more so just seeing how, you know, the other players in the industry uh, see Cyprus expanding and, and continue the trend of, of doubling the tourism that we said, you know, happened over the last 20 years. So look forward to the future. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin. Uh, I would like to pass now to Panos Alexandru, uh, founder and CEO of Gideon Ocean Holdings Limited. Panos, please, for your remarks. Thank you very much, Andres. I would also like to thank uh, uh, Invest Cyprus for the opportunity and for the invitation to attend this event. I think it is a great event and uh, it will hopefully highlight the potential and the opportunities which uh, my group, my company has seen. Uh, and that's the reason we decided to invest and focus in Cyprus. Uh, we are... Uh, currently um, working to develop the largest uh, real estate and infrastructure project ever done in Cyprus. And, uh, and we're here purely because we saw huge potential and a very big opportunity. Uh, we believe there is a lot that uh, can be done, there is a lot that needs to be done. And I think with uh, goodwill and uh, everyone's effort, uh, we'll manage to substantially bring a positive change into the tourism industry in Cyprus. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to continue with Panos and uh, go on, uh, go in Larnaca. Uh, we are seeing a major development happening there. Uh, what do you see in Larnaca and how do you expect uh, the trends uh, to continue there? Uh, with the marina and- Purely potential, okay. Uh, in, in our view, Larnaca, it's, uh, we describe it as the sleeping beauty of Cyprus. It is a city which uh, has about 80,000 inhabitants. It currently has the largest international airport in Cyprus. And it's been a city which seen, has seen the less growth during the last uh, decade, 15, 20 years. You know, we have been discussing with our partners uh, what do they think about Larnaga when they visit Larnaga the first time about 20 years ago? And they said it still looks the same. And that's why we saw a big opportunity when, uh, you know, the, the recent project was announced. You know, we saw the opportunity to jump on it, in it. And uh, I, I think once we start work, actual work on the ground, you will start seeing things changing for Larnaga very quickly. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing any infrastructure happening or uh, needed uh, to uh, unfold the potential of the, country, of, of the city? A, a lot. A lot of infrastructure. 
a lot of infrastructure needed, and I think a lot of infrastructure needed all over Cyprus, because we have seen during the last five, six years, a very big development uh, change when it comes to new real estate developments, apartments and villas. Uh, and I think we, we are a bit behind on infrastructure. And what I mean by infrastructure, I mean roads, I mean uh, parks, restaurants, recreational grounds, uh, basically developments to give something back to the people, something to the people to do, and a reason for people to, to, to visit Cyprus. Thank you very much, uh, Pano. So from Larnaca, I would like to move on to Limassol. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Kevin, uh, who are invested uh, in the big uh, resort, uh, the city of dreams. Uh, I have two questions for now. Uh, the first one is, what are the main reasons you are seeing uh, for investment, for such an investment here? If I'm not mistaken, we are talking about uh, more than 500 million investment for jobs to be created about uh, 200, uh, sorry, um, 2,000 uh, jobs, maybe more than 2,000. Uh, and the second question is, uh, how is the whole uh, uh, investment progressing? Uh, yeah, uh, both fair questions. Look, the, uh, the desire for Malco to invest in Cyprus and Limassol specifically is obviously the, the geographical location, and, and it's in a prime spot to be successful and, and add a diverse value that is currently not here. You know, you know, Melco, if you look at other jurisdictions, is an integrated resort uh, uh, company, and, and we strive to drive, you know, things beyond gaming. You know, so the MICE business, Expo business, uh, you know, actually having a, a, a good integrated resort with, with pool functionality and, and big retail, all that, all self-contained. So to your point, the over 500 million uh, euro investment is progressing. Um, and, and we're still hopeful. Obviously, you know, there's some challenges when it comes to COVID and all of that, but that's you know not unique to us. It's, it's a global phenomenon that we're working through with the, with the help of the separate government and all that, you know, as they continue to balance, uh, you know, the needs of public safety versus, you know, economic drivers. Uh, so we're hopeful and we maintain that hope that uh, upon opening, uh, we'll be able to, you know, drive the, you know, 300,000 tourists or, or whatever it is that we need to make sure that not only us, but Limassol and its subsidiary businesses are successful as, as we move forward through time. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like now to pass uh, to Andrea Sandis. Uh, Andrea, we have seen NCH Capital uh, having invested 150 million very recently. Uh, how do you see the potential unfolding from this investment? And uh, what are the longer uh, future uh, projects? We believe that the hospitality industry is something that has been in Cyprus for many years. It starts to change the way it has been operated. What I mean by that, we are moving away from the traditional family hotels that they were things of the 70s and 80s. Now more statutory investors are coming into the country. We are starting to see more branded hotels of international levels. So we believe that uh, we should invest in the hospitality. We also believe a lot in mixed-use resorts. So to combine the hotel with the residential component and work as a resort, as a unified uh, uh, location. We also believe in Larnaca. That's why the majority of our investments as we speak are in Larnaca. Larnaca has the longest uh, seafront, the coast is the longest coastline. It has been underdeveloped for a number of reasons, like the refinery that was there and is now in the process of relocation. Uh, yes, infrastructure, further infrastructure is needed to support these projects because you cannot have a beautiful marina or you cannot have 150 million five-star hotels on the coastline but not be supported with the infrastructure. I'm sure the government is aware of it and they are working towards that uh, target. So we are very hopeful and we have seen from the study that the Hospitality industry will continue to rise in Cyprus, much higher than probably other sectors. 
So that's why we have decided to invest and we see a great opportunity and potential in Cyprus and in Larnaca in particular. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, I would like to ask uh, if there is one single thing that you will ask from the government on what they should do, uh, what would that be? And the second question is, if you are seeing response on this uh, uh, concerns that you perhaps have. You, you will allow me to say two things. Of course. <laughs> One is the speed of obtaining the relevant permits, which is fundamental. And secondly, in the areas where we see this kind of investment, the government should support it with the relevant infrastructure that is needed. With regards to the response, yes, I would say that the government of Cyprus and the relevant authorities are responsive and uh, they have the will to do it and we hope that uh, apart from the will there will be action and have these things implemented because wishing something is one thing implementing is another so it's good to move from the wishes to the implementation but we are hopeful that with all uh, stakeholders we will manage to succeed and thank you very much and that's why we have george here who is uh, the connecting link and I think all our participants uh, should be aware of all these efforts that have been undertaken by SIPA and uh, the close collaboration that uh, SIPA has with all the ministries, the relevant ministries, in order to make the environment more conducive. And taking uh, this opportunity, I would like to uh, also ask uh, George Cabanella, CEO of uh, SIPA, uh, what are the main initiatives that uh, are currently undertaken by SIPA on improving uh, further the specific sector. Obviously, I know you are working on different other sectors, but how about hospitality? Yes, thank you, Andreas. Um, as you, you see before from the uh, presentation uh, by THR, we work with uh, these uh, consultants um, to add on uh, our suggestions to the ministries. Of course, we are in direct uh, communication with the international investor community, and uh, we try to connect the dots, uh, as you see, as you said. Um, we heard um, uh, from our esteemed uh, panelists uh, uh, some major issues, like the infrastructure, like the licensing procedure, I guess that um, that are um, uh, it, it's, it's everywhere in every, every investment destinations. Uh, investors uh, look for faster, the uh, fastest, uh, more smooth uh, procedures. Uh, also, I would like to add uh, another element: the uh, skill labor, the availability of skill labor. This is crucial uh, for every tourist destination, um, especially for develop. Uh, various segments of the offering. But um, I would like to say, Andreas, that um, uh, we are happy that we have uh, uh, here with us today uh, investors that uh, do not represent the brownfield segment, but the greenfield. And uh, we understand that globally there has been a shift from greenfield to brownfield, but we have here today with us uh, some investors that uh, are decided uh, even in the pandemic to they have taken some investment decisions to proceed this shows exactly their belief to the country uh, and the prospects and uh, i would like to thank them for uh, um, uh, sharing uh, our views and the way that we see cyprus developing in this uh, sector thank you george and obviously we're talking about a, a panel where Participants here are uh, invested uh, in the island, uh, showing uh, not only uh, a theoretical approach, but uh, actually uh, having felt the prospect of uh, the specific sector in Cyprus. But now I would like to go back to Larnaca and uh, in Radisson. Uh, we have with us Ellie. Uh, Eli, you have been uh, here in the island, I think, for uh, around three years. Uh, what are the what What is the reaction? Uh, obviously, excluding the pandemic, because we are sure that uh, it's totally different story. But what is the reaction uh, about the investment? And uh, from your experience over the last uh, 15 months, 
how are travelers adopting to the new realities? On that, Michael, I think I'd, I'd like to go back to what Panos was saying. I think Panos has set the stage that Tarnaka was underdeveloped. It's a, it's, a, it's a city that wasn't as uh, developed or established as Nicosia and Limassol. So, um, so this is where the investors saw the opportunity. They saw that this is where real estate prices were low. This is where we can build. This is where we can attract investments. And then we, we launched our first hotel, which opened. We signed our second, which is opening later this year, which is the Radisson Beach Resort. And then we heard of the announcement of the redevelopment of the port. So it's, uh, it's created a ripple effect where there's an increased awareness of how attractive Larnaca is as a launching pad for us, how, how attractive it is for investors. Now you said that George was saying uh, of the investments continued during the pandemic. For sure, we have signed, we as a company have continued signing deals. Our hotels have continued to open. Uh, investors look long term. Uh, real estate uh, investment activity, uh, real estate is there for 10, 20, 50 years, whereas pandemics come and go. Um, so there is, and, and Cyprus in particular, the stability of the island, the, 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 the ease of doing business has all attracted more and more investments. Now, in terms of operation during the pandemic, it's very, very important to note that the Radisson Blue in Larnaca was the only hotel, was one of the few hotels that stayed open. Uh, during the pandemic, except for the couple of weeks of intense lockdown last year. The hotel did not lose money last year. The hotel actually made some money last year because there was a lot of demand from corporate clientele, from co corporate guests. Um, the, we, have, we, as part of the WTTC, were founding members of the safety protocols, hygiene standards that we've created for our guests worldwide. And so we have implemented them in our, all our hotels. Uh, from a from an operational perspective, we've kept the we 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 with our resorts worldwide. We're going to continue attracting many of our guests from different uh, feeder markets because of the safety protocols that are in place and the hygiene standards. So, we are adapting, uh, and we're here for, uh, in, for the long term along with our investors. Are there any future plans uh, in the rest of the city, Sally, for uh, for the group? Yeah. I think Cyprus is one of my beautiful success stories. Um, we have, we currently we have a, a current Radisson Blue in operation. When it was first signed five years ago, um, the market wasn't ready for it. It was, it was predicted never to open, and then it did open. And we signed the Radisson Beach Resort, uh, 200 Keys, which is opening in September this year. Uh, we have underdeveloped the Radisson Blue service apartments close to the Radisson Blue in Larnaca. We also have under development in Radisson Blue and Nicosia, which uh, both of these are starting construction later this year. And we're about to announce next month, we're about to sign and announce uh, a Radisson collection in Larnaca, as well as, uh, which is our luxury brand, as well as a Radisson service apartments in Limassol. I'll keep the uh, locations confidential for now, but there'll be nice surprises. You have uh, more plans for the island, and uh, congratulations for last year's performance. And we uh, hope that uh, you continue this year and the year to come uh, the good uh, performance that you have uh, mentioned before. Also, I would like to ask now, Kevin, uh, what are the future plans uh, for your organization after the completion of uh, the casino? That's a good and fair question. I, look, I, I think the future plans uh, really rely or are rooted in the fact that uh, between us, our partners, and the Cypriot government, we, we have the same goal. And, you know, whether we're talking about construction or five years down the road, but it, it's to continue to make Cyprus you know, a, a globally renowned destination. And, and we can only do that you know, through diversification. We've got to make sure that it's not a single source industry. You know, and I've heard other panelists talk about, you know, continue to grow infrastructure and, and uh, uh, other uh, new greenfield areas. So I, I think Melco's plan is to make sure that we help out as, as we can to push that forward. And that, you know, and that's why we're building an integrated resort and not a standalone casino. It's because we see the need um, uh, for that base to be built, that foundational support um, uh, to happen in order to draw 
you know, the other direct foreign investments. So I think as you look over the next 10 year scope, you know, that's the process or the plan. And so obviously we're not talking about a, a project which is related to seasonality and the specific summer sectors here in Cyprus. So we're talking about a year long uh, uh, activity. And uh, the question is, where do you see demand coming from? Or, is, yeah, or where is it expected to come from? Yeah, no, that, that's a, a fair follow-up. Yeah, obviously the, the success of the, the building building or the business that's here uh, implies that the, the seasonal curve that you guys have has to be expanded. So obviously peak to peaks, but you know, you gotta expand the trough periods. And you know, and that's why we're focusing on mice and, and, and hopefully the ever burgeoning expo business. So you look at places like uh, uh, Israel, Lebanon, uh, the Middle East, uh, Northern Africa, you know, EU countries, you know, the fact that Cyprus, where it sits on the map, is within a short flight to all these destinations, I think has to be capitalized on, you know, and, and as you continue to expand on the infrastructure, just re reducing the, the barriers to entry uh, of those tourists or all other business professionals becomes paramount. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin. Going back to Banos, Bano, um, talked before about the marina. And I want to ask uh, your view on how do you think that uh, Cyprus it is positioned for these larger scale projects. Mm -hmm. what, what is your view here? Uh, look, uh, the, the, if, you, if we are talking about the geographical location of Cyprus, I think it's great. I think uh, it's unique. And the reason is we are the first stop when uh, ships are coming out of uh, Suez Canal into Europe. Cyprus is the first European stop where uh, they can birth. Uh, we, we are, as uh, Kevin said, we are very closely located to Lebanon, to Israel, to Middle East. We are, of course, the last exit point of Europe when in ships are going to, to Middle East. And I think what we should maybe focus uh, ourselves is to how do we make Cyprus a, a real hub. Now, how do you make a hub? Uh, we have seen countries like Dubai doing it. I think Israel, although it's not a hub, it has flights, uh, direct flights in too many destinations around the world, maybe everywhere around the world. Uh, we have seen countries working together, even Israel, UAE, etc., now doing, developing their relationships, and I think we, we can play a very good role there. And I think if we man, if we do manage to to establish Cyprus as a hub, I think uh, sky's the limit. You know, the potential is huge here. Thank you. Now, Go ahead. If, if, I'm, if I may add a few points, I think Kevin's future plan should be to come and talk to us and see how we can do an amazing casino in Larnaca, which doesn't have one. Or it has a small one, but I think, and these are again great, you know, opportunities where. Two, two major companies can come together and create something beautiful and amazing for the city, for Cyprus. For the... Then I, I also think, and I think it is important to, to mention that, I think our project, it is, it is the, the benchmark or the test case of actually every government department working together in order to create and, and achieve something great. We have about 45 stakeholders when it comes to government side involved in our project. As you probably know, we work very closely with the Ministry of Transport, with the Minister there of Transport and the Permanent Secretary and their teams, of course. And we have managed to, to identify and appoint a person from each stakeholder, 45 of them, which when something is needed, we have a direct access to somebody who is dealing with a specific request and, and they do deliver results. And this is, I think, a great achievement. It is the first time, as far as I know, that it's been happening in Cyprus. And, and I think as a test case, if this succeeds and, and works, I think it shows to other big investors, potential investors around the world, that Cypriots and the government and any government, it's here to listen, to work, to push, and to try and achieve, if there is serious interest, to bring results. I think it's great. Really, really an amazing achievement. Yeah. Thank you, Bano. Uh, I would like to ask Andreas, uh, George, he touched upon sustainability before. And uh, how do you guys get ESG into your uh, projects? 
uh, taking into account that we are seeing tourists that are planning to come to the island in uh, places where are more Instagrammable or places where uh, are more green. So what are the what is the reaction yeah, from say, NCH Capital? Yeah, I would say we are very sensitive of it and we would love to incorporate and have as much as uh, renewable energy in green areas and make people feel that they are coming for relaxation. They don't want to live their daily life, which is uh, probably in concrete, in cities full of concrete, uh, traveling and transport to be for hours. So they need to experience something different. Of course, in Cyprus, as you all know, um, the ability to develop a project in huge areas, especially on the seafront, is not so easy. So we are trying to maximize the green areas, to maximize uh, eco-friendly living with the limitations that they are in place due to the location of our uh, projects. We have, for example, if I may say, another project in Greece, in Corfu, which is in uh, 500 acres of land, and there is no movement of cars. It's purely, purely ecological. We take full consideration of the green areas, forest. So you need to do the maximum possible, having in mind the location and the limitation that it incorporates. So I understand green is at the heart of the business model. It is at the heart of the business model. We try to maximize it and uh, expand its limits. Um, what about uh, Eli? How are you guys uh, tackling uh, ESG in uh, Radisson? Uh, it's, in our, it's one of our core pillars when developing hotels and when operating hotels. All our hotels in Europe are Green Key certified, and you need certain requirements to meet that, to meet that standard. We, uh, we look at it from a development perspective. We look at it from an operational perspective. The idea is to reduce um, uh, operational costs and to reduce the impact on the environment. We expand it further. It's beyond just... Uh, green initiatives. It's also social responsibility. We call it responsible business. It's about the environment. It's about the community you operate in as well, charities and how you give back uh, to the to the environment. But one thing, one thing that's very very important from an investor's perspective um, is that um, there are many incentives that are being offered by by governments uh, to be green key certified, to be sustainable. I think investors should benefit from these incentives and they could get, get tax cuts, uh, tax break. I think that banks are looking at green loans and we're, we're hearing, we're seeing more of them taking place in Europe today. Many guests look, look to um, stay at hotels that are environmentally friendly. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, it's all about business as well. Operating costs are supposed to drop as well. So from, a, it's, from, from every angle, it's a very important element that's coming, becoming even more important uh, as we um, as we develop more hotels. Thank you, Ali. Uh, Kevin, how about uh, the city of dreams with regards to sustainability? Yeah, no, it's a good question. And for this one, you know, just to pull back a little bit, I, I think this is driven by Mr. Ho and, and the board. Um, and I've sat in a lot of these meetings and, and his desire uh, to have a, a neutral platform or a green platform is, is paramount. You know, we're, we're green certified, you know, and we're going to build a bottling plant so that way we don't have plastic bottles. Um, I said, as a CFO, I sat in a meeting last week talking about how we can plant more trees. Um, and if you look at other jurisdictions and what they do, you know, with uh, waste recycling and, and using gray water to uh, push through your cooling towers instead of fresh water, um, you know, just it's an all-encompassing effect that isn't ROI driven. It, it's driven by how do we impact the business and the planet, you know, over the next 50 years and what small incremental changes can we do now? And this is where just continued partnerships, you know, with, you know, our local partners are great CNS and, and continue to partner with the regulatory bodies here in the Republic of Cyprus to understand and, and see what the real importance is on, you know, uh, renewable energies and, and driving those infrastructures as a real green field seem to be paramount for us and everybody. Thank you very much, Kevin. 
Um, George, uh, how uh, is SIPA uh, tackling uh, environmental issues like what we are discussing and how do you guys uh, further promote uh, the ESG into this uh, sector? Yes, thank you, Andreas. Um, we uh, understand the global trend uh, towards ESG, green financing, uh, green funds. Uh, and uh, we uh, work with the supply side here in Cyprus to see more projects uh, coming uh, uh, into the market along this uh, to be in line with ESG. And we support investors that are looking uh, for projects uh, that are uh, ESG driven or aligned with ESG. And uh, as you are uh, going to hear later on in our uh, presentation for the project ban, uh, we have included some projects uh, like in the agro-tourism, um, uh, rehab and health, uh, um, assisted living, uh, projects that um, and differentiate uh, the offering and diversify the product. Uh, and for us, it's uh, uh, another uh, form of hospitality. Um, but um, uh, let me, Andreas, um, say uh, a few things about this new trend, because we understand that uh, our existing investors here on the island, um, and they include these considerations when they plan uh, their projects. And uh, talking with them, we understand the sensitivity that they have toward these issues. And as the Deputy Minister said, one of the five uh, main targets of the National Tourism Strategy 2030 is exactly to uh, become more sustainable destination. Thank you very much. Um, I want to change the subject, okay, and we talked before about infrastructure. So, Andreas, we discussed about how internal infrastructure will elevate further the tourism product. But how about uh, connectivity? So I'm not talking about digital connectivity. I'm talking about the connectivity of uh, the island to different markets. We have seen progress, I think. But uh, what, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I, I agree that there has been progress. However, Cyprus still is an island. So connectivity, as we speak, is mainly through the air. Uh, it's an issue. It removes a competitive advantage other destinations may have because they can be accessed by car or by boat. But I think uh, it, we need to improve connectivity for sure. Uh, we need to give incentives to more airline companies. I don't know the logistics and how things work and uh, how it can be achieved. But for sure, if we want to expand further into new markets, what we need to improve is the connectivity with direct flights and it's something that can uh, elevate the tourism arrivals in Cyprus, especially from destinations where we believe that it will attract more high-end, more targeted uh, type of uh, tourism, and that will increase foreign direct investment as well, because they will see the opportunity, they will see the potential, and it will be a big plus. Thank you very much. And uh, Pano, how do you see uh developments in this front and what about uh having more hubs here in cyprus yeah, from airways it's, and airlines? It, it, it's an area which uh, lacks at the moment we we do need uh and i think that there was an announcement very recently about wizier if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. setting a base in in larnaca but due to the pandemic, that is a fair, that is a progress that I yeah. I was referring to. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a great uh, achievement, I think. Uh, probably, possibly because of the COVID situation, it's, it's been delayed. But not only that, if if, if from, from our perspective, we have we are currently talking with uh, cruise liners and maybe create the fly and sail uh, program where people will be able to fly directly into Larnaca Airport and then get on board the ship out of uh, Larnaca port and sail around the uh, Middle East countries or Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, we are also aiming and we hope that our project will create a lot of interest when it comes to building sm a lot smaller marinas in order to, to be able in a, in a few years' time 
to establish Cyprus as a yachting destination. It is something that has been discussed a lot recently, but not much has been done yet. I think now it's a good opportunity because it, it's not enough to have two, three, four big marinas in, in a country. We need to have a lot smaller marinas and maybe theme marinas so people can stop for a night or two, have fun and entertain, enjoy, and then move on to, to the next uh, little destination. There is a lot to be done there, but I think, I think the key uh, point here is, is to see that there is huge potential. I think when, when an investor is looking to where to go, what is my next destination, etc., it, yes, it invests in people. Yes, it, it looks at the uh, political situation in each country. But I think the, the number one drive is the potential. And it, Cyprus has a lot of potential. Uh, I completely agree, Ban, and that's why I'm raising this issue, because I believe that uh, truly further improving the air connectivity will uh, certainly unfold the whole potential uh, of the island. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think of the course. The of Royal Caribbean, which is yeah. one of the largest uh, cruise uh, companies in the world, has already shown its trust in Cyprus, and I think it's something important that we need to mention, and hopefully with the infrastructure and the different, um, the, the Larnaca Marina and port, that will encourage more such type companies to, to, to have their presence in Cyprus. Indeed. Indeed, uh, an amazing uh, development uh, on that front as well. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Before ending, I want to give you the floor for uh, a final remark. Uh, very, very briefly, uh, Kevin. No, this is, I got to Cyprus two weeks ago, um, and I got to say, over the last couple of weeks, I, I've been supremely impressed uh, just by, you know, the population and everything I've, I've dealt with on the regulatory front and the government, you know, just the, the willingness to figure out what the problems are and how to partner together and move forward has been impressive, and you don't see that in other jurisdictions, and I think it's you know, things like this that help continue to uh, push Cyprus's boundaries and, and help us grow. So thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, Eli, final remark from your end. Yes, uh, look, um, I, I believe uh, I, I believe very much in Cyprus. That's why we've been there for a long time. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that uh, to add to the connectivity point, a flagship carrier could also help. Uh, more air routes could, could be open. That would create the hub that Cyprus is looking for to add more to uh, to the connectivity subject. The island has so much potential, and this is a message to investors. The branding penetration, international brands, is less than 1% uh, in Cyprus. Uh, there's a huge potential to have more branded hotels, more branded service apartments, more branded residences. There's huge potential to have convention hotels. There's a huge potential to have wellness resorts as as was discussed as well. Uh, there's a huge uh, opportunity to have more branded four-star resorts in Limassol, for instance, budget hotels across the island. So uh, from a hospitality and real estate perspective, the uh, potential is, is great. And I'm happy to discuss with investors different ways of making, uh, of, of helping with their investments. Thank you very much, uh, Eli, and uh, not only for your comments, but for the uh, offer you you are providing, uh, Panos. I, I, there are two two small remarks I want, I want to make. The first one: the importance of having foreign investors in Cyprus is not just investing and bringing their money; it's the exposure they bring with it. They expose Cyprus to the world through their group of companies, through their other investments, through their network of people, through their friends and family, and this is something which is very much needed. You know. SIBA is doing a lot and is trying, uh, Ministry of Tourism is, is also trying, you know, the shipping, newly established shipping ministry, uh, deputy ministry is also trying a lot. But I think we, there is a lot more that we have to do there. We have to to, to get Cyprus known. We have to get uh, people know that Cyprus exists and is willing and is here and is willing to to do business, to bring investors in, to help them with their investments. And the second point, I think, which is, is very crucial, and we have, we have the responsibility to see what we do, how do we go about it. I think today the biggest problem everybody has, including us, is finding qualified people which are prepared and willing 
to really push hard and work hard in order to bring deliver results. And I think we should all sit down and, and discuss this and see how can we uh, put an end to this, maybe by getting permits to bring people from abroad. And it's a very crucial point when it comes to tourism, because the countries you see today flourishing when it comes to tu the tourist industry, it's because they have cheaper labor, not cheap, but cheaper labor than other countries. They have more people, they give better service, they give more service, they do a lot more. And I think this is, this is uh, you know, something we need to discuss at some point. Yeah. I completely agree, and I want to reassure you that this is part of the national strategy we're undertaking, the Economic Council. Uh, George is a member of the steering uh, committee, and uh, we have actionable items coming out of this, uh, which will be announced uh, pretty soon on the 22nd of July. We'll have a public consultation where we are taking the whole strategy of the island uh, to the public, uh, communicating uh, the whole plan, which part of it has already been embedded on the recovery and resilience plan of Cyprus. Okay. Andreas, uh, final remarks? I would say that Cyprus is changing. I think that it started to attract more statutory investors, which is very important in improving the product that is on offering. I believe that um, we should focus on the positive, I should also believe that the will of the authorities and the government, SIPA and all of you with the different um, responsibilities, understand what the needs are. And I think the government should act quickly to implement those things and create more foreign direct investments in Cyprus. So let's uh, close with uh, a positive uh, note that, yes, the opportunity is here, just needs to be explored. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, George, uh, before the final remark, uh, thank you for the invitation. But also I want to ask uh, if somebody wants to come now to Cyprus, based on what uh, has heard, do they contact you? How does it happen? How is SIBA uh, involved in this process? Certainly, uh, Andreas. We are the first point of contact for the uh, international investor, and we stand ready, uh, myself and my team, um, to support you with information and with uh, um, uh, looking around opportunities and uh, uh, understanding the market uh, and hopefully proceed with new investments. Um, I would like to um, say that my message is clear and loud. Cyprus is not another island touristic destination. The geostrategic location between three continents, the huge catchment area that uh, was enough to drive Melco in choosing Cyprus uh, and uh, other international investors like Panos to uh, uh, make their business plans in Cyprus uh, showcase the potential of the country. Uh, traditionally, we have been a friendly business location and we have been hosting uh, large international companies, whether in the uh, shipping industry, having the largest maritime uh, cluster in Europe, now with the ICT sector hosting big multinationals in the island. And uh, the vision of Invest Cyprus and the government is to make Cyprus uh, a place to live and work, an international business centers, and we don't believe we do believe that there are synergies between this priority and the hospitality priority. And uh, certainly, this uh, priority of the international business is supporting as well the connectivity issue, and creates new rever revenue streams uh, for the hospitality investors. Thank you very much, George. Yeah, it, yes, it, of course. Something now. There, there is currently an initiative by the shipping, Deputy Minister of Shipping to connect Cyprus and Greece by uh, boats, by I sea, see. which I think it is a, a, a very good initiative. And I think if it's done right and if it's developed right, I think, again, the potential is... Uh, and we're not talking about connecting Greece and Cyprus. You can connect Greece, Cyprus, and, and the Middle East 
through this line. So I, I think it's a, another great connectivity issue there. Thank you, Bano, for, uh, for this. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I would like to thank first uh, Invest Cyprus for uh, giving me the opportunity to chair this panel. Uh, also, uh, thank our uh, participants. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Kevin and Ellie, also, thank you. Uh, uh, what I want to close with is that what you have seen and what you will be seeing in this uh, session, in this job, in this the authorities, the Cyprus, the Invest Cyprus, you have seen ministers before working closely together. And this is a demonstration of all the efforts undertaken to move this to move uh, things for, forward. Uh, we will continue working all together, solving problems when they appear. And the fact that you see all these stakeholders participating in such events is a true demonstration uh, of the way that uh, we are tackling all situations. Thank you very much. Uh, Elena, back to you. Andreas, thank you very much on behalf of the Invest Cyprus for moderating so elegantly. Dear investors, we thank you for helping our historical multicultural island progress so responsibly. Thank you for sharing your views and experiences. I come from the travel industry and I can reassure you that there is a, a, a scheme by the Deputy Ministry of Tourism and Hermes Airport in order to base uh, an airline here. Uh, Wizz Air has done it amid the pandemic, so there are schemes for that.